Okay, so let's get into it. Uh, so working with text data, uh, so data, you know, you may, uh, most of the time, like you get the data, and then, you know, data comes in a lot of different shapes. Uh, but at the end of the day, those are mostly the text data. So, but by converting be, or be able to work with this type of text data, then you can do a lot of uh, different analysis, right? So that's what we want to talk about. And uh, typically though, uh, you know, so you might have heard of something called regular expression. And regular expression is really helpful, like when you know it. Uh, you can do a lot of uh, different things with, uh, you know, when you want to work with the data. And in this example, like you try to uh, extract the numeric uh, or like a you know, um, number portion of the data from the this text data. Or in this example, it's very simple. When you get the email address, sometimes you want to just get the domain name or you want to get the, uh, extract the uh, username or user ID. And in that case, you can use a regular expression. And then uh, we're planning to do some more like a regular expression series. But the good news is though, because a regular expression, to be honest, I'm not really big fan of it because it's so hard to read. It's always so confusing. Uh, but it turned out there are a lot of things you can do um, without it. So even like if you don't know the regular expression, like you can still work uh, with the text data by using uh, various very convenient, useful functions that I'm going to introduce today. Okay, so let's uh, get into like what type of the text operation that we are talking about. Uh, but before going there, like we're gonna we want to use a unicorn data. And what is a unicorn is that the company, the private company, is mostly basically startups. That means uh, valued at greater than uh, one billion dollars, right? So like a companies like Airbnb, Uber, uh, SpaceX, or Slack. Uh, those are the startups. It's not a public company yet, but their value is, is uh, valuation is greater than one billion. Okay, and then it turned out there's a website that keeps track of uh, uh, these uh, unicorn companies uh, for like how much is they valued, uh, when they became uh, unicorn, uh, which countries are those companies located, uh, with what industry, and then most importantly, who invested it in uh, those companies uh, type of information. Okay, and then you can access to this URL. Um, after this, uh, I'm gonna show the demo. So like I'm gonna start from like web scraping uh, in exploratory, but uh, um, if you can't wait, uh, you can just uh, go to Google, uh, type this like unicorn data from Shiba Insight or something like that, and you can see that data. Okay, and then eventually at the goal, as a goal, we wanna do is like, basically we wanna find the questions of like, hey, which venture capitals uh, investing in unicorns and how they are investing, like which in, you know, venture capital is you invest in more than the other town. So that's the thing that we want to understand. For example, you might have known that like, Google has its own venture uh, arm, and if we, um, if we invest a lot of us in a lot of uh, startups, and many of the startup, startups are actually successful in terms of the, you know, if you define a success as a unicorn or not, then there are a lot of um, uh, unicorn companies they invest. So that type of information, like uh, we can find out uh, quickly uh, by uh, working with or cleaning up the text data. Okay. So, uh, so this data is kind of a perfect example because it's easy to. Uh, scrape the data from the web, but most often the data, uh, especially you scrape from the web or you know get the data from Excel, the data is um, um, very messy. So uh, these are the common type of the challenges, starting from two uh, and to number eight. So like I want to go through like a step by step. Okay. Um, so scraping data uh, in exploratory, you can click on the plus button and then select the web scraping from the menu then all you need to do is type URL and then you can get the data. So this feature is super useful, but um, I have to tell you is some of the website makes it super easy to scrape, but some of the website uh, makes it hard to uh, scrape because if you might use in sort of like a dynamic HTML page with a bunch of JavaScript. So if you type the HTML, like this one's expecting there is an HTML table inside that web page, but sometimes it's not that uh, simple. And we're thinking about enhancing this capability for the exploratory, but um, um, this website turned out is super easy. Just all you need to do is type URL and then you get that data right away. I'm gonna demonstrate that after this. Um, but you get the data like this, and the most easy to see is sort of uh, this way. Um, so the company column, variation column, date, and so on. 
And you, if you have been working with data, like you might start recognizing uh, right away here is, uh, for example, the second column variation. And this is obviously it's a data, so it's like more like a numeric values, but uh, it comes as a character. And in this next column, the date join, it's, a, it's obviously it looks like a date data, but it comes as a character. So you start thinking, oh boy, like we have to clean this app to convert those uh, data to the right format, then you can uh, do some analysis, right? So those are the things basically we're gonna work. But first thing uh, I wanna cover is, Remove empty rows. What it mean is that when you look at, for example, summary view, you see that kind of uh, red color. Um, red color in the summary view indicates NA, right? So, and then one thing though is like NA is often like you can see NA in any you know types of data, but here you see some kind of like a pattern here. It's like every single column has 8.05% NA. So that means probably is like it's, there are some rows completely NA. It's the exact the same amount of the NA percentage for across the columns, right? So we well, turn that when you go to the table view, um, it's like some of the rows are completed in it. And this happens a lot when you try to extract data from the web page because with some of the website try to make the web page looking better or the table looking better. They actually use weird kind of like a, uh, empty uh, um, string in the HTML table to make the table look better. So this can happen. So anyway, if something like this, it's much better, uh, much more comfortable to just remove the entirely the step the row. Because if some columns has NA, but then you might want to keep it because just one column has NA doesn't mean other columns values are NA, right? So then like, you got to figure out how to fill those NA kind of stuff or how to treat the NA. But here, if every single column is NA, then let's remove it, it's just useless, right? So, I mean, especially this case, it's, you know, there might be but, uh, other cases uh, in the world. But uh, let's, uh, for this one, we can just comfortably remove it. To remove though, like you can click on the add button at the step, a top, uh, step area, um, top section or header area of the right hand side step. And then you set a keep only and then rows without NA. And then you can use that to uh, remove the NA, okay. So what I'm gonna do in this session though, like I'm gonna just kind of explain all the stuff, those like eight steps. Then after that, like I'm gonna do the quick demo to go through all those uh, eight steps, kind of like as a um, reflecting uh, session, okay. So the next step is once you remove the empty uh, rows, then you wanna convert the character to numeric. You remember those like a valuation column that looks like a numeric or the numbers, but it's, it comes as a character, it came as a character. So we're gonna convert that. And the next step, we're gonna convert the character to date, right? So there's like a unicorn date, uh, becoming date. Okay, so to do this again, it's like you can click on the, uh, this one is not slightly different, but a very common operation in exploratory. You can click on the column header menu, and then, then there's a change data type, and then select the convert to numeric, then um, you can actually strip out all the numeric parts. So that only the, in this case, data, or if it happened to be space or weird character, those things get uh, stripped out. Okay. And once you get the numeric, then you can do all sorts of things. You can visualize it because now it's a numeric. So therefore, like you can use some function, the average, median, uh, you can do all sorts of calculations there. Okay. And then the, you want to convert the character. You remember the date joined column? It's, it looks, uh, looks like date, but it's actually registered the character. And if you want to know more about like, how to work with date on time data, um, we did an online seminar uh, last week, and there's a recording and the slides available at our online seminar page, so you might want to take a look at it for more details. But anyway, so this one, again, uh, you go to the change data type, and then, uh, select in this case looks like a month, day, year as an order uh, of, of the in, inside the data. So you select month, day, year, and this will convert uh, into uh, the date data type. Then once you convert the date uh, to the date data type, all the sound. I mean, like in the summary view, you can see like mean and max. That means like you can see the range of the data. Um, in this example, happened to be from 2009 to 2018. Okay, so like that's the range of the data. And also you can see histogram to see like what uh, time range has more um, data and that kind of stuff. 
And then again, you can also do a lot of different cool things. For example, you can use window calculation as inside a chart to show like a cumulative numbers of unicorns, uh, for example, by country in this case. Then you can see, okay, for example, US has a lot of unicorn, China also has a unicorn. And then like you see like China kind of started growing from 2015 uh, as compared to like US is always kind of like uh, from uh, way before. And this is, by the, way, by the way, this data though is like unicorn data of the today. So that means that some of the company become uh, public or like when IPO, then that company disappear from the desk. So that's why like most of the company kind of like starting from like 2013, 2014. Okay. So that's uh, that like we saw like a converting character to numerical date data. And then like the next thing is uh, typically happen is uh, you, the data like this. So this data, as you can imagine, like you, let's say like one unicorn like Uber, the few investors join. And it, Probably there are much more investors, including angel investors and so on. But I think this is a kind of a top investors or like a top venture capitals invested in this kind of certain amount, uh, greater than certain amount. So, but anyway, so for the first row, you can see like uh, the comma delimited, but like you have like three venture uh, names, so like lowercase capital, benchmark, and then Google Ventures. And then you want to see, let's say like you want to answer the questions like, hey, which venture capital has most unicorns? then you can't answer the question with this data because like each row is just like a three companies names and then you try to aggregate this then like you ended up like a weird list of the kind of a combinate uh, group of the investors but what you want to do you want to know is like for example like the aggregate numbers of google ventures aggregate the numbers of like, the total number of benchmark capital so what you want to do is separate each value inside this like a select investor row into the road. So for example, I want Google Venture benchmark lowercase to be in the separate road or the independent each uh, different roads. Um, so to do uh, you're something like this. So from left hand side to right hand side, right? So like the first row becomes the first three rows in, in the uh, right hand side picture. So therefore, there will be a lot of duplicated rows. But if you're focusing on the number of the investors or something about investors, this format will be much easier to, uh, to analyze. I'll show you this uh, later as well. Okay, and then, oh, yeah, I think this slide probably might uh, make it easier to see more intuitively. So what we want to do is something like this. Okay, then this one too, you can go from the column header menu and then select separate. And then uh, separate, like, there are a few, uh, two options. Separate two columns in this, for example, like you want to create like, each column to invest, uh, represent each venture capital. Or separate the rows, which that is what we want to do this time. Okay. Then like, you can select how, like, what are the delimiters. In this case, a comma. So we're going to select a comma from the list. And then uh, you get that result. Okay, and the next one is a remo remove letters from text data. So this is where we start getting to kind of regular expression, but not that much. So, you know, sometimes you, you find some of like a characters that it, you, you want to just simply remove, or you want to replace, or you want to just extract, those types of operations. Uh, I'm going to cover just a remove uh, in this session, but you can do a lot of different things here. But you can see like some sort uh, kind of like a, um, uh, uh, the tip of the example here. So for example, let's say like you have this data here, it's like there are Google, Google Capital, Google Ventures as investors. And it, this happens a lot, right? So like, um, the data has three different entries, but if you happen to have some kind of like a domain knowledge, like you see like, hey, um, I think these are the same thing. Maybe it, it, technically they're different, but in this analysis, let's say like, you know what, like Google is Google at the end of the day. So I want to combine all these Google together as a one Google thing, right? And then maybe some other investor names too, like similar things, you know what, like there's no point for me to analyze uh, uh, separate uh, for this analysis. Then in this case, let's get rid of the capital and the ventures as a text um, to make it to be like a right-hand side. So instead of counting them separate, I want to count Google as 10, you know, Google has 10 unicorn companies. Then with that number, then I want to compare this number against other venture capitals and then see like how Google 
as a company uh, doing in terms of like a unicorn startups uh, investment. So to do again, this this do from the column header menu, and there's a menu called work with tax. And this menu, uh, this column header menu is context sensitive, which means based on the data type, um, uh, you see the slightly different menu. So for example, in this case, a character data type, therefore you see like work with text. The, if this kind of happened to be number, then you might see like work with number or work with number uh, uh, numeric functions or something like that. But here is a like work with text. And then under that, there are a lot of cool, useful functions that I recommend, highly recommend you to take a look. Um, but one of them is called remove text. So by using this, um, this is going to basically create a mutate step, which is to create calculation. Uh, it's kind of calling, it, calling this calculation is kind of weird, but uh, at the end of the day, like basically it's kind of like a Excel, right? Like you type equal sign and type the function, and then you select the column name and then do some kind of operation. Basically the same thing. In this case, using SDR underscore remove function. And then inside the first one is a column name. It's like select investor is a column. And then the second one is the, the string that you want to remove from the data. So here, like I set like a space and then the capital, and then because I want to get rid of this data from like all the, every single row. Okay. And then another thing though is like we wanted to also remove ventures, right? So either capital or ventures, I just want to remove it. I just want to keep only the Google. Uh, but not just Google, let's say like another company. I don't know if they do it now. Let's say like Facebook is investing and if Facebook happened to have like a capital and a venture or something like that, then like I, I, I want this operation to happen those data as well. So therefore, like just typing like this, it's actually you see the like uh, vertical bar or pipe, like a cap between the capital and the ventures. And that is actually considered as an or. And this is actually the regular expression thing. And the only regular expression you see in this seminar. Uh, like I said at the beginning, we are, think, uh, we are planning to do like regular expression seminar at uh, some point. But today, uh, this is the only place you see. But this is very convenient. That's why I'm using here is because this one, this means if you find a capital or ventures, just remove it from the data. Then you get just the Google uh, data here. And then the uh, step seven, this is like removing extra spaces or special characters. And this happens actually a lot. What do, you, what do I mean by that is first, there's a here, like you see like a, a backslash N backslash T. Uh, when you scrape the data from the web, this N is like meaning a new line or like a return key, the kind of going to a new line. And a T means a tab key, right? So again, to make the, uh, the, the text or like whatever the information looking better in the website, many people use like this kind of like a new line or tab key or you know, a special character. And then when you scrape those um, new line or a tab or like a space or um, um, other stuff comes as a kind of like a special character like this. But you mean obviously like you don't need that because this uh, makes it, for example, if uh, you might have like a Tiger Global Management somewhere else that doesn't use uh, backslash and backslash D, then they are considered as a different data, but we, that's what we don't want. So we want to get rid of those special characters. Another thing is like there's space, uh, you know, many people space in randomly. So sometimes like you want to see space, only one single space between the, between the text. But sometimes uh, you see like a couple uh, extra spaces, or sometimes you see the space at the beginning or at the end. Those spaces like, actually confuse us because they look similar, but they're different in terms of the data or text data. So you try to uh, you know aggregate, you try to do the filter, but you don't get what you want. Most of the time, like their space is kind of uh, disrupting you. So you want to get rid of that or clean up. And then there is a Again, like you select the work with text from the column header menu, there's a clean up text data as a menu. When you select it, and then this will populate str underscore clean function. This will remove those type of like kind of like a preserved uh, weird uh, uh, encoding characters like backslash or backslash n, backslash t, but also extra spaces. So for example, like when you have the space uh, between string and then one space is okay, but if you don't, uh, you don't want to have the second and third space, then, and those second and third get rid of that. Uh, 
And then the space at the end, space at the beginning, those also will be removed by this function. So it's pretty cool and it's pretty simple. And the last is a create other group. What happened though is when sometimes when you have the um, when you try to visualize the data, and in this case we have I think I forgot uh, exact number, but let's say like a, we have like a four hundred um, venture capitals invested in a bunch of different unicorn companies. So therefore, what is going to happen is you end up like seeing like four hundred lines, or in this case maybe not, but you know there are a lot a lot of lines, and then it doesn't make sense at all. And so what you want to do is let's say like you want to see the top ten frequent um, uh, values, unique values, and then like you want to see like everything else under the other or something. Uh, you know, in this case, a frequent, but you might want to use a different column, you know, either way, but you want to create other group for like some kind of like not as important as like a top 10 or top 20. Then like, you can actually uh, do that. There are two ways to do. Uh, one way to do is uh, inside a chart. Uh, for example, in this case, I'm assigning the investor name uh, to the color. So therefore, color property, there's a setting for that. Also, uh, sorry, I'm skipping here. Uh, this is optional, but uh, you can do as a wrangling step uh, to create other group. And this is very powerful. Um, so again, like from the column header menu, and there's a menu called create other group. And under that, there is a least most frequent values. And then there are a couple other ways to create other group as well. For example, by using based on the you know, different column values or something. Um, but here, like uh, you can use at least most frequent values. Then you can set like, hey, how many uh, unique values, the most frequent value you want to keep. Then um, let's say like if you type ten, then like you're going to see ten investor name plus others, which uh, includes all the other investors um, uh, used to be. Okay, so something like this. Okay, so the companies like Google turned out to be like the you know, top 10, so therefore Google will be Google. But uh, the next one, let's say like a matrix patterns turned out to be top, not top 10, therefore it becomes the other, or something like that. And then eventually you get the chart like this. Okay, so that's, uh, well, uh, you know, th those are the kind of things uh, you can do. Uh, but I want to see like how exactly to do by demonstrating it in expertly. Okay, so I it was kind of, it might be kind of going too fast, but from here let's go just step by step to see like what we just talk uh, see and talk about. So here I'm gonna uh, copy and paste uh, this URL and then go to just paste this URL and. I think you can just Google it though, by the way, if you don't remember this URL, or uh, I'm gonna uh, share this PDF uh, after this session, uh, keynote, uh, this slides after this session, then you can see that as well. Um, here, so this is the website uh, we wanna scrape, right? Um, this is here's a table, and then like, we wanna bring this data into exploratory and then do some analysis here. So to do uh, inside, uh, next to the data frame, uh, so there's a web scraping as a menu, so select that, and then copy paste the URL and click round bottom. And in this case, just sometimes like the website uh, web page includes multiple tables. Then in that case, you want to select which part of the table you're talking about. Especially like you try to get the data from wiki page, um, um, there you see like a lot of tables there. But in this case, there's only one table, and you see here in the preview section, and looks okay. So that just as uh, I'm going to click save button and then unicorn data or something. And here it goes. Uh, we have the data. Um, you know, like we saw, like variation is somehow the character, so like kind of got treated as a character, uh, date joined as well. But we're going to combat this. And also here, there's like a 6.62%. Uh, NA for company, but not only the company uh, company columns, all the columns are a similar way. So like a, like a 21 rows are, uh, seem like a NA for a, a, across the across the columns. So we want to get rid of that. And then here the select investors. Uh, this is the one later like we want to separate into rows. Okay, and then let's do let's do that. So first. I want to see this like a NA thing, so like a uh, row of four, looks like all the NA. 
So we basically we have 21 of these, right? So that's when, uh, what this means. So let's get rid of this. To do, well, two ways to do it. Like one is like, um, you can just simply filter and it is not NA. And then this is gonna do basically get rid of these NA rows. But this is basically evaluating if that NA, the data is NA or not by using just company name, a company column. But I wanna make sure if the company name happened to be NA, but other columns have values, then like I wanna make sure like what, why is that uh, before just removing, right? But if all the columns are NA, then I'm more comfortable just removing it without even thinking much, right? So that, that's why like I wanna go to the add step. And this is actually 5.1 UI, so like it's kind of got add uh, text there. Uh, if you happen to be using a 5.0, then you see only the plus button, but it's the same thing. And underneath, there's a keep only, and then uh, rows without NA. And there's a dialogue here, but this dialogue actually doesn't really mean anything. You can click, uh, select any of them. Um, and then like, basically, like you get a uh, little NA value as well. This one is selecting company, um, but it's supposed to be, you don't have to. I think there's a bug that like, now you have to select it, but you don't uh, actually um, need to select it, which means, um, yeah. But anyway, so we get rid of the NA. So now the next thing we want to do is, um, by the way though, if this step, you can always, if there's something weird, you can always change to like, um, uh, convert to R command. Because as you know, like export is basically the UI for R. So like underneath, it's always there's a, a, a corresponding R command is uh, being executed. But you can actually customize it if you like without using UI. So in this case, hey, like why I'm using even company column? I just wanna just drop in there and making sure all the columns are in it. In the case, I can just remove that and click around button. And basically, this is exactly the same thing. So if, when I go to step before, 370 rows, and then if you come back here, now like 296, that now is all the NA is gone. So that looks good. And the next one is this variation column. And then like I want to actually uh, extract only the numeric part because I don't need a data sign here because we, all the value is actually billion data. That's a unit anyway. So, um, so let's do that. Here, select the column header menu, change data type, and then convert to numeric. And this uh, produce, uh, populate pass underscore number function. And it says override existing column, and I'm fine with that. Uh, I don't need to keep like original column. So like I'm gonna click just round button. And then now like this column is a numeric. And once it becomes a numeric, you see the histogram. And then like a minimum value is one billion data. Of course, this is a union, uh, unicorn company anyway. But the biggest one is a 75 billion uh, unicorn. This is like just insane. But uh, anyway, that's not subject here. But the 75 billion dollar valuation, valuated private companies. Um, I think that is this company so from China, the company that creates TikTok, uh, they call it ByteDance. Um, this company is a 75. It used to be Uber is number one, 72 billion. I thought it was crazy. But now these days, I think that China is also uh, going uh, massively, uh, aggressively, <laughs> highly valued here. But anyway, so that's not really the point here. So, so we got that. Next one is this like a date join column here as well is a character data. So let's combat this one to the uh, uh, date. So change data type and then convert to date time. Only thing you gotta uh, care, you, you gotta make sure here is like what is the order of like year, month, day uh, component. So here, in this case, the data is, for example, the first one is like 11, 13, 2018. This is like November, right? So month, day, year. So like all, need to do, all I need to do is a month, day, year. I need to select this uh, order. And then this produce MDY, month, day, Y function. It's super convenient. And it doesn't matter what's uh, between each component of like year, month, day, uh, space, dash, uh, text, it doesn't matter. The order is what matters here. So I'm gonna just click on run. Again, I'm gonna override the existing column because I don't care about the original one. And if you wanna see like how happened, like what happened before and after, you can always go uh, to the step and click on the step before, you can click on the step of, of now. And then now like you see a histogram, so this data is from 2010 December to 2018 December. Right. 
So it looks good as uh, that kind of data is um, coming, coming along, right? Um, we can see, for example, uh, for, uh, once we get this data as a de nice data type, then we can see, for example, select a line chart and select that date column. And instead of the year, I can do like a month because this column is now the date data type. So I can do like a lot of different date related operation. And then like, I want to see like a cumulative of uh, this company. So like, how many unicorn companies today, but how many companies before. So uh, select the window calculation and then select the cumulative sum, sum is the default, right? So like a unicorn company is kind of increasing. Of course, this is like, um, you know, like as the years goes by and it always goes going up because it's cumulative. But nonetheless, and then like, you can select, for example, country, there's a country data. So let's see like, which country has most unicorn. Obviously, that's the United States, and the next one is China. And these two are super like, um, um, are massive. And compared to these two, like, the other countries are almost like nothing. But nonetheless, there's India and United Kingdom and other countries here. OK, so that's cool. Uh, but the next thing is we want to do is we want to answer the questions of like, how many, uh, what are the, which venture capitals are investing in the, the, the most uh, in terms of unicorn companies. So to do, uh, here is a problem because uh, like I said in the slides, um, there are a few entries, multiple entries in one each company, right? So for example, this one, uh, the Byte to Dance, uh, there's a Sequoia Capital China, SIG, and Sheena Weibo, Weibo and SoftBank. There are four entries. But then like, I want to count, for example, like, how many uh, unicorn uh, companies SoftBank is investing yeah, I can't answer this because these are like, not separated. So like, that's why like, I want to separate so that like, each venture capital will be in each row. So let's do that. From column header menu, select separate, and separate to rows by, in this case, comma, right? Comma is a delimiter here. So select that. And then like, I'm going to click on it. Then what happens is, for example, the first one, byte dance becomes four rows, Uber becomes three rows. That's because those are the number of the, um, uh, investors uh, in the original data. Okay, so this one, for example, let's take a look at the Uber. We have three, and then sort of after you separate, now like we have the like, three rows for Uber, lowercase, benchmark, Google, and so on. Okay, so that looks good. And then there's a kind of weird empty here. It's not NA. If it's NA, it says NA, kind of in a gray color, but it's empty. So let's get rid of that. Like we don't need that kind of confusing data here. So it's not empty under the filter, and I'm going to click it. Then it just, it's gone. I think, uh, how many rows before? 810, and it becomes 807 because there was some kind of weird uh, space uh, uh, empty. Okay, so now from here, what we wanted to do is, uh, yeah, we want to get rid of this. This like a dash N, dash T, this like a, a new line or tab key. And also sometimes, like I'm not sure, like, but sometimes like, there's a weird space at the end, some, uh, at the beginning, and also multiple space uh, between. So I want to clean this up. So from column header menu, work with text, and then there's a clean up text data from the uh, start from the top. And then this populate str underscore clean. And when I run on it, now those kind of special characterish things gone. And the space also uh, taken care by. So now at this point, let's go to the chart and create a new chart. And then the pivot table. And I want to see like select investors. So here's a uh, list of the um, investors. And then like a number of rows, meaning that each row now uh, is an investor. But uh, that means Google came like a twice, Google kept it twice, and Google ventured nine, nine rows. That means, um, you know, this is like a number of the unicorn companies they invested in. But uh, obviously, like we want to see like this Google, uh, Google Capital, Google Ventures as a Google. Um, and then maybe like as a, uh, maybe, in, uh, venture farm too. Uh, we don't want to have this uh, capital venture. Instead, like, we're going to just kind of aggregate this, uh, sum up that, those texts. So let's get rid of this capital and ventures, right? So to do, um, I can do either from the summary view or table view. Let's go to the table view and then select from the column header menu, go to the work with text. And then this time, what we want to do is remove text, right? So here's a remove text. 
and then it populates SDL underscore remove, and then uh, capital. But if I do this, then what's going to happen is it's going to be like, so let's say the Google space capital becomes Google space. So I don't want that because I want to get rid of space as well. So like I'm going to just type uh, space here and then run. And then what's going to happen when I go to the chart view, um, Google, where the Google here, the Google capital is gone. Now it's under the Google. So like it used to be two, but now it becomes four. I want to get rid of ventures as well. So like let's really modify the one that like we just did here. SD select um, here, this is a second token. Click on that. And then like we saw in the slide, use this like a by, uh, pipe or like a vertical bar. This means or. And so like I, I'm, I'm going to use that and then type space. And ventures. Was that ventures? Uh, I want to see what that is. Yeah, ventures. Okay. So ventures. So that means if it's capital, the ventures and remove those letters. So click on round bottom, and then let's see like how what happened to the Google. Uh, now it's a Google is only one, and then instead of like use it used to be like a two or seven or something like that. Now it's a thirteen, and this seems to be more accurate in this case. So I'm going to go with that. Then at this point, I think it, we got all the data uh, kind of cleaned up. I mean, obviously, like I can spend more time to make sure to go to these data the uh, right way, but I think that's good enough for now. So therefore, like I want to go back to the original chart, and this chart is showing the cumulative sum of unicorns for by country. But instead of the country, I want to see by the investors. To do, uh, I want to select the investor name here. But the one problem though, is that this chart is pinned to the step three, right? This is green color, because that, this is when I created this chart. So the chart is still getting the data from this step. But I wanna get the data from this step six, because we did a lot of things. I mean, like not a lot, but a couple of things, the separated rows, a filter, and then we uh, clean up the investor data. So I'm gonna bring this pin. I can do either click and then, and then like a click again, which is basically change the pin position to the currently selected position. Or I can just drag and drop to whatever the position, uh, in this case, step six. And then now the data is coming from this step, uh, from step six. But then uh, what I want to do now is under the color, I want to select the this select the investor column. And then, so now like we are seeing here, but it looks kind of weird, what is this? Uh, blue thing. This is called others. So this that creating other operation happen automatically, and you can see that from here showing twenty groups and others. And obviously the other has a lot. This data must be the long tail data, right? So uh, what I mean by that is if I go here and I try to you uh, assign select investors, and then by sort by the y axis. So this is the, how the data looks like. So most of the venture capital or investors invest in one unicorn. I mean, like this is amazing. If you happen to be able to invest in one unicorn venture capital, uh, venture company, I mean, like you're super lucky. But it's good invest, uh, investor or great investors invest in more than one, not more than one, more than 10. So these are the ones. So uh, that's why like, we see a lot of them are others, but we don't care about other for now. Like we just focus on at this top 20. So I can click on this green or I can click on this um, gear icon and see this a group setting. Either way, uh, I'm gonna click on the green text. It's the same thing. And it, it says uh, keep only most frequent and then default to 20. If you wanna switch to 10 or well, you know, whatever the number, I can actually type 10 here. And then right now to show others, but you know, others, I don't care about that now. So like I click on it. And this is where uh, um, now like we can see like 10, uh, top 10 venture capital uh, in terms of like how many unicorns they invested in. And then like now I see here is like, a, for example, the Sequoia, Sequoia number one. And then the number two is Sequoia China. Maybe like I should uh, combine these two, but in this, in this seminar, I'm not gonna do that. But uh, nonetheless, this venture capital is crazy. It's like a, not just a 20, but also they invested in 17 Chinese startups, uh, unicorn startups, it's just insane. But anyway, so next one is uh, Andreessen Horowitz, uh, as known as uh, A16Z. Um, 
the guy who started Netscape uh, uh, created this venture capital, and then uh, Tencent and then all the other companies as well. So this is how you know the venture capital firms are accumulating the unicorn companies. But again, uh, let's say for example tomorrow, if we Uber go a uh, public company, then the Uber data is going to disappear from this data. So this doesn't mean like how many unicorns they invested in the past because a lot, you know, the, all the unicorn became uh, uh, public and uh, gone from this data. But you can still see some kind of a trend, like which company, uh, which venture capitals are, uh, uh, you know, great or uh, strong in terms of like, how many unicorn companies they invest. Okay, and I think that's pretty much it for um, um, uh, working with text data. Uh, I think here the point is, even without using regular expression or without using kind of like doing weird magic in Excel, uh, you can do a lot of things uh, in a very simple way. And the cool thing about this is, let's say the next month, uh, obviously, like unicorn data keeps changing, right? So next month, if the unicorn data change, uh, then you want to update this uh, this chart or this data, whatever. All you need to do is click on this like a uh, uh, re-import button, and this is going to uh, take the uh, updated data from the same source. This happened to be the web scraping. It can be CSV or remote CSV or database data, whatever that is. You re-import it, and then all these steps will be reproduced. So you don't have to do this uh, um, uh, data wrangling stuff from scratch again. Or you, if you import another data set, which is Unicorn data, for example, then you, know, like you can actually copy and paste by selecting multiple, um, oops, uh, selecting multiple steps. And then uh, you can copy, oops, uh, what's going on here? Looks like my, um, yes, you can select uh, multiple steps and then uh, from the column header menu. Sorry, I think my screen is kind of freezing. And then you should be able to click this menu and then you can select uh, multiple steps and then uh, copy and paste. Uh, what's going on? Okay, so there's something maybe not working. Maybe something to do with the Zoom, or maybe like I'm using a uh, de developer build, the development build. So it might be something to do with it. But you can copy all these steps and then paste in a different data frame to reproduce uh, whatever the data wrangling steps uh, you did before. Okay, so now let's go back to the slides. I think that's pretty much it. And the last, uh, not the least, I want to do is like a, um, I want to give you know a proper credit that is um, so most of the functions you saw uh, coming from the R package called Stringer and then you can see more detail about this package uh, stringer.tidyverse.org and then um, probably like you might have known uh, the Hadley Wickham is a god of modern R uh, who, and, and then also other folks uh, created this package and maintaining. And, and, they, and then this, when you go to this website, you can see even like a cheat sheet. You can see a lot of other functions, a lot of other things you can do as well. So I highly recommend. And last, uh, the, here are the contacts. So like if you have any questions, you want to have any like follow up, you know, uh, talk or something, uh, please uh, feel free to reach out to me at khan at oexplority.io or you can follow me at Khan August at the Twitter. And also, if you're interested in uh, taking some of the training, uh, we do um, um, uh, online training as well, so like you can go to exporty.io slash training. Or like if you're interested in like, following up like, this type of seminar, like, um, uh, we're gonna, we are planning uh, other seminars as well. So go to exporty.io slash online seminar. And if you have other topics you'd like us to cover, please feel free to uh, reach out to me as well. Okay, I think that's all. So like I, with that, I like to open up